Why'd you touch it again? I didn't. <laughs> Bring us in, babe. <laughs> Welcome to... Coco Caliente. <laughs> that was a fail intro. You know, and it kind of symbolizes this week because it's been all <laughs> over the place. It's been chaos. That's actually true. That's hilarious. Um, Where do we start? I guess we'll start... So. I got into a car accident, if if you may or may not know. I'm obviously doing better right now. Um, it's been, what, four days since the accident? Yeah, what day was that, Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's been, today's the fifth day. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is what happened. And it's kind of, I this is ironic because I preach to people all the time because of my job that, hey, you don't swerve for animals. You got to hit them dead on, right? It's a better chance for you. Uh, to be safe. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's sad for the animal, but at the end of the day, you want to protect yourself, especially if you have kids in the car or anything like that, right? So I was driving uh, to school at four something in the morning. I take back roads on the way down and those back roads are more prone to have deer. And there was a deer in the middle of the roadway. I tried to miss said deer. I hit the deer. I went into the ditch. I went airborne because I hit like a like a hill, and then the car landed on the other side. The car was totaled. Luckily, I just uh, I had a mild sprain on my ankle, so I was on crutches this whole week. And uh, I had some bruising around my body. My neck was really sore from whiplash. But all in all, I was safe, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it was fine. But that really just twisted this week upside down because now Nicole had to take care of me. <laughs> and she yeah. had to take care of the baby, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm normally gone all week, right? So she's only have to worry about herself and the baby. Yeah, um, and then my mom normally helps. Oh, yeah, that's a wicked bruise you got right there. Oh, yeah, this one just came up a couple of days ago on my forearm. Well, it's I don't yellow even... now, so it's starting to heal. Yeah. But then my mom, she, um, there's been stuff going around this area and then <clears throat> within our family too because I had strep throat and then an upper, upper, upper viral infection then my dad got something, but none of it was COVID. Um, and now my mom's going through it. And so then she wasn't able to help me either. So I was like, okay, I got to hold the family together. <laughs> and <clears throat> I actually didn't know like how strong I could be with that. And so it made me like feel really proud because it was like, okay, what's important is taking care of the family. Like work can wait. Like this podcast, we're recording super late because of everything um, and then Amazon live, we haven't gone live in like a week and a half because of everything. So it's just prioritizing. And then that really makes me think, yes, I need, and we're moving. Okay. Yeah, on so top of that. It's, yeah. it's insane. Everything I have going on, but you just got to take, everyone has a lot going on and you just have to prioritize what comes first. So being a mom comes first for me. And, and so then it's just like, okay, if arrow's happy. Oh, then he also had his injection or his immunizations, his vaccines. So that has been yeah. really, really hard on top of it too. We'll get into that a little bit. So yeah, as you know, it's just been chaos. Like it has been absolute chaos, but we're smiling through it and we're getting through it together. Um, as far as Arrow's um, vaccines, so I heard, like, a lot of people, I asked for advice, like, what should I do? Am I going to, I think last week you guys heard me say, like, I don't know if I can go into the room. Um, and Victor, because of his car accident, he was able to be there. He wasn't going to be able to be there. Um, so it was going to be me and my mom. And so Victor was there and he was able to help because I did end up leaving the room. It was a little too, I was talking to the doctor for a long time about it and my eyes started to just tear up and I just couldn't like, I couldn't just like stand there and watch him. I was definitely not going to hold him at all. And I told them that. So Vic like stood next to him and comforted him. And I told him like whisper in his ear, watch him. A lot of advice that you guys gave me. He did actually. He did really good. Yeah, honestly, and in, in, in there was two nurses in there, um, and they did two injections in one thigh and then one in the other. Like at the same time, I was just waiting outside the door, when just like waiting to hear the cry. I was just like, I was like plugging my ears, and then I heard it, but it was real quick. And so then I played like the rescue, hurried up and whipped my boob out, <laughs> and he stopped crying. Yeah, he only cried for like ten, fifteen seconds max. Mm-hmm. 
So that was really good of him. And a lot of people, so some advice that we got, I figured I'll share is some people, a lot of people said to feed through the injections. And I was like, oh, this is so smart. Um, I'm going to ask if I can do that because that's like his most comfortable place. And they said he could choke. And I was like, wait, I don't understand. And then Vic's like, say he like gasps and then has like milk in his throat um, and then he can choke on it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's so, like, I didn't even think of that. So yeah. our doctor's office didn't allow that. But, um, some other advice was not to look your baby into the eyes, not to hold your baby down, have the others do that. Definitely play like the rescue. Um, and goodness, what else is there? There's quite a bit. Oh, don't wear like tight pants. Don't make them wear like tight pants that you have to put something over. Oh yeah. So I had him wear like a buttoned up romper that didn't have to go over his head or his legs at all. Um, and then, oh, I, he, Tylenol before, but okay. So this is a big thing because I got a lot of messages saying, give Tylenol before, and then I got a lot of messages saying, if people are telling you to give Tylenol before, <laughs> don't do it because I work in a pediatrician's office and it reduces the um, symptoms no, and the side effects if something well, happens. Well, the side effects yeah. and it also reduces the potency of the, oh, the vaccine. vaccine. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to do it before. Um, so that's something you need to look into. And I saw a lot of people said that they do do it like in the car ride there, but we did not. And I just, I, I don't like to do anything where there's like two sides. I'm pretty much... Research shows <laughs> I'm not going to do anything if there's unless like, it's a definitive. Yep, that's the only thing. Yeah. So then, but then Tylenol after helped a lot, and Arrow loves grape Tylenol. <laughs> um, we gave it after I think like three times, and actually today is so he got his shots on Wednesday. Today's Saturday, and he's just this morning. I'm like he's back to normal, back to himself. Mm -hmm. I was really like. Oh my God. He did get a, like a lump on his leg and it wasn't under the injection site. It was like right next to below it. it. And yeah. And I was like a little bit freaked out and it was red immediately after the shot. And I like looked at the nurse and I said, okay, is this, cause they come back in after 15 minutes. I'm like, is this something that is normal? And then she's like, okay, yeah, that's just like a reaction. But then it turned into this hard lump. So then of course I called and asked on Thursday and they talked to the pediatrician and he said that that can be, that can happen. Um, but it just seemed like he was in a lot of pain still. So then we gave Tylenol a couple more times and now he woke up to be, he was actually not even eating as much and that was worrisome. Well, and, and the frustrating thing too was he would just be crying for no reason, right. which and we were assuming it's from that pain in his leg. Cause he's never done that before. Yeah. He'd like cry himself to sleep. Like you cuddle him and stuff and he'd cry cry and then slowly cry less and then fall asleep and then he'd wake up in a cry and we're like what the heck like that never had he normally wakes up stretches smiles, smiles you know and i was like man this this really sucks yeah right? it, i yeah. was like for a minute i was like did did i do the right thing like this is horrible is he ever gonna be himself again and that's just me being completely honest with you mm -hmm. um but vic is like you know no we had to do this and and it's just hard to make your baby go through that and for me, I needed to do more research and stuff on it, but I'm glad that he woke up as himself today and he wasn't eating as much. And so that was, I called the pediatrician's office yesterday, which was Friday and they are closed. I mean, I'm so <laughs> frustrated that like, why does pediatrician's or doctor's office close Friday, Saturday, Sunday? You could start using, uh, babies still get sick. I have access to that online. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the phone, virtual, the thing. Phone virtual yeah. thing. And so maybe you could start using that for stuff on the weekend. If you have any questions, they could. Well, and I've, I'm like, gosh, I should have messaged my best friend, Mariah, who's about to be. <laughs> she works in the Nurse peds. practitioner. Yeah, yeah, and she works in the peds ER. So I'm like, okay, I should have, which I don't know why I still haven't. <laughs> Um, but I called there because I was like, I'm taking him in Vic. Like, I'm sick of this. Like, I just want him to be seen. I want him to check his throat. I'm just yeah. psycho about that stuff. But he slowly is like, yeah, he, so he fed a lot through the night and he started to look, look like he was losing weight. And that's why I was getting worried. Cause it's like triple chins turned to double. <laughs> <laughs> just little chunk rolls. <laughs>
This episode is brought to you by Seed. So Seed is really cool. It's a daily symbiotic. I've talked about it on Instagram if you've seen it on there, but it's a capsule in capsule that protects against stomach acid, digestive enzymes, and bile salts for viability through digestion. So what does this mean? This means that the live probiotics will actually make it to the end of the small intestine for delivery into the colon. So where it's supposed to be, there's a prebiotic outer capsule and a probiotic inner capsule. And each component of their refill system is designed to protect your daily symbiotic to be gentler on the earth. So your shipping box, for example, was made from... Oh yeah, I thought this was really cool. It's made from uh, paper made from algae that would otherwise damage fragile marine ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And your bio-based tray is made from renewable ingredients like starch, natural fiber, Mm -hmm and water and produce energy efficiently. It's fully recyclable and home compositable. So what this helps with too is I think we kind of skipped to and just assuming you would know, but it helps with digestive health and beyond. So there's cardiovascular benefits and there's a lot of other benefits that help with like um, regulating your bowel movements mm-hmm. and stomach acids and pains and stuff like that. So it just helps. So right now you can get 15% off your first month's supply of Seed's Daily Symbiotic by going to seed.com forward slash coco and use code coco at checkout. All right. Again, that's 15% off your first month's supply of Seed's Daily Symbiotic by going to seed.com forward slash coco and use code coco at checkout. Um, but so he fed through the night really normal and he feel like he gained like half a pound in the night. So I'm like, okay, and he's giggly and he's happy and the thing on his leg went down smaller. Um, so, and you know, for me, it's just really hard to trust, uh, people's opinions, even if they're in the medical field, even if they are experts, It's really like I do take their word for it and I like listen and I usually do that. But the second that there's something like contradictory, yeah, it's it really puts me back because, for example, I took Arrow to the doctors when I thought he had a fever that one time and he didn't because I did do like a rectal temp and it did show up over 100.4. And that's like the for a baby, that's the point where you got to take them in. So I called the office and they said, take them to the walk-in clinic because the doctor's out for today. I took them in and then I checked it again in the car and it was normal. And so, you know, I was like, you know, for me, pros and cons, me going into that nasty office mm-hmm. where everyone's sick, it's not worth it for me. He's actually fine. He's giggly. I think I, he had just had a bowel movement and I think like maybe the heat of that made the temperature hot, <laughs> yeah. but it's fine now. And then I checked it again. It was fine again. So I was like, okay, I'm going to tell them I'm canceling my appointment. Keep in mind, I left the arrow with my mom in the car. I didn't even want him in that office. Everyone's coughing. I mean, there's, they test for COVID there. It's just like a place you don't want to be. So I went to go cancel it. And then the lady's like, well, you're next. So if you just want to like keep it, you should keep it since you're already here. And I said, well, isn't that like, there's all this nasty stuff in the air. Like, I don't really want to bring mm-hmm. him in. She's like, oh, no, like, we clean, we disinfect everything. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you can't really disinfect the air. <laughs> but I'm kind of a freaking pushover. So I said, okay, I'll be in the car. Just give me a call. So anyways, I bring him in, and uh, they weigh him. And when she weighs him, she says, oh, like, do you know if he's over 10 pounds? And I was like, yes, he's over 10 pounds. And she's like, okay, I don't really know how to use this scale or anything. It's been forever since I've done this. So then she puts him on the scale. Since she's weighed a baby. Since she's weighed a baby. And it's like the scale where you like tap, 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 you know. Like the weighted scale. Yeah. And she goes, oh, he's 13 and a half pounds. And I'm like, he's 13 and a half pounds? Like, oh my God, last I knew he was like, like solid, just like 10. 10 and some change. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And then. Uh, then I have the nurse practitioner come in after like freaking 45 minutes of waiting in there. I'm like, God, why did I do this to my baby? And she checks his temp. His temp's good. That's it. He looks fine. He looks healthy. And then I leave and I'm like, I'm so pissed at myself. I wanted to leave. Trust your gut. Just like leave. Um, so and so skip to uh, our appointment the on Tuesday. Yeah. They weigh him. They do this every day. It's a, not like a tick, tick scale. Um, he's, oh, he's 12 pounds, 10 ounces. I said, and this was two weeks before <laughs> he weighed 13 and a half. And I said, I freaking knew he didn't wear, cause I came home and I was like, Vic, our baby, I don't think he weighs 13 and a half pounds. 
And I was just like so weirded out by it. Anyways, they didn't even freaking know how to weigh him. I took him in trying to get a medical advice, like if there's something wrong for my baby, and it doesn't make a mother feel good when they can't they even, can't even properly. give a proper weight because guess what? Tylenol and medication goes upon that weight, right? So that's freaking scary. Mm-hmm. They were to give him something that day, they would have given him a... I mean, I bet you, Victor, at that point, he probably was 12 pounds. So a pound and a half more of medication that he didn't need. And so that's what frustrates me. And I haven't, like, vented about it. So this is where I just vented about it. And sorry that you had to listen, but I just want you to really, really um, trust your gut. Get a second opinion. Get a second opinion. Oh, and another thing is, is when my mom got a COVID vaccine, like around this area or not, yeah, no, uh, COVID test, <laughs> they literally didn't even, um, and it was at the same office. They literally didn't even stick it like in her nose. They stuck it in, you know, where you have like a ball at the tip of your nose, they stuck it there. And she was like, there's no way, like, I don't think she, I have COVID, but like, there's no way that test is accurate. And they call, oh, nope, it's negative. But like. If you're going to stick up for yourself is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, my mom did say, hey, I don't think you stuck it back in the right area. She said the girl looks very young and like this was like maybe her first time or something. But you have to advocate for yourself because no one else is going to. And that's what's really important. So then she went back and got a a real test, etc. But yes, I'm just telling you that because me working in the healthcare field, a lot of people don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people... Just kind of go through their day. Okay, I just want to get through the day. Because it's a job to them, right? It's not life or death. And for you, it's a lot more. And it means a lot more to you than just, I need to get home and I need to do, you know, I need to do the dishes. I need to pick up my kids from daycare. Their mindset is, this is a job. And I don't think they get paid enough to... And and not everybody's like that, but there's there's a lot of people like that. There's awesome. Like our pediatrician's office is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. He'll sit there and talk to us for hours about what every question. I love that. There's some people that excel and some people that just are like, eh, I picked the wrong job, but here I am. Mm -hmm. You know? And so... (sighs) Yeah. It's like uh, there's a comedian that says like, I don't want to go under the knife of somebody that got an F on their... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting the surgeon, and you'll never know, but I'm getting the surgeon that got a C minus on his uh, <laughs> <laughs> surgical exam. You know, <laughs> and I'm not, and and I okay. And Victor brings up a great point. I'm not dissing on the whole healthcare no, field at no. all. It's I'm just, just saying you know. for when my experiences, and it's when it's my baby, it means a lot more to me than even if it's just myself. And I think the comedian went as far to say it's like if I donate my body, right, to mm-hmm. to excel the levels of science mm-hmm. and then I get <laughs> my body's just laying on the table they got to do an assignment on and I get the hungover student that just messes it up and they draw a big old F on my forehead because he yeah. messed up <laughs> the Oh assignment. my gosh. <laughs> well, what's really crazy too is my friend when she was um, pregnant, so you go in and you get checked because she was about to deliver and so you check the um, vaginal canal to see how much dilation, yeah. right? So to check that... She, the nurse stuck her hand into her anus <laughs> and as someone who's about to deliver that is very concerning right <laughs> no it's not victor it's not like funny no i'm saying like that is like a big red flag like you're like let's see how dilated you are oh yeah. no that's your butthole <laughs> and she and then the the my friend had to say that's the wrong hole <laughs> And so that is concerning, right? <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. I get that. But but it just sets up for, oh, shit, what am I about to get myself into? That, you know, I how uncomfortable that situation must have been. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's an exit. Yeah. And that's happened to several people. And, and I can't say that I've never done anything like when I was a nurse that probably yeah. made a you're patient perfect, feel. You know, you you're know. not perfect at all. But... It's just how you handle the situation after or say, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry or, oh, my gosh, like it's it's just. No, no. We just check the anus first sometimes <laughs> to see. <laughs> oh, so that's just a little bit of frustration I've had. This episode is brought to you by Brooklinen. Comfort is king and tis the season for a royal coronation. Sleep like royalty on the softest sheets and let's not stop there. 
Upgrade your comfort with bedding, towels, loungewear, and even robes. The sky's the limit with Brooklinen. Brooklinen was started to create beautiful, high-quality home essentials that don't cost an arm and a leg. And people, what a success. Brooklinen works directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. So you get their amazing array of products at a reasonable price. Brooklinen has something for your every comfort need. Ideal for a seasonal refresh because they're launching new products, colors, and patterns all the time. We love our Brooklyn and sheets. They're so soft. They're amazing. So give yourself the comfort, refresh what you deserve, and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code COCO to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter promo code COCO for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code COCO. Changing gears, mm-hmm. changing gears. We close on our house next week. Oh my gosh, we are so excited, you guys. Our our current house is so cluttered. Nicole and I just talked about this before mm-hmm. we started the pot. Like we've given up, mm-hmm. right? There's no, you can't clean when you have no space to put anything. It's almost impossible. Like, And with Nicole, with her ads and her stuff, and then I get stuff here too. I mean, and the baby stuff. And people giving us stuff for the baby. I, we, our shed is full. Our garage is full. Our house is full. It's about to explode. It's like in the cartoons where the house just starts bulging out and moving. Yeah. So next week we'll close on the house and we'll be able to start moving stuff hopefully next Thursday. And we're so excited. And we were at the house yesterday. And Nicole, Nicole has some ideas about the house and the colors that she wants to go with. And I'm not going to disclose the colors that she wants to go with, but it's definitely a conversation point down the line <laughs> that we'll talk about. Um, well, we got to talk about it soon because the painter comes in on Thursday and he's going to start. I, well, you want to talk about it? Sure. All right. So Nicole wants to do pink. Pink is, pink is the new neutral. <laughs> I, you know, I just haven't seen it. I, you were supposed to show me your inspo yesterday. Um, yeah, and, and, I, and I didn't see it, but I just pink when I, when I think pink, mm-hmm. I just think like, uh, Victoria secret, just like plastered all over the place. No, you that's not, I mean? that's not it. It's going to be more of a, like a vintage, so, like a soft, soft pink where you're kind of like, Oh, it, it, cause if you think about it, like look at that breast bag over there, that breast milk carrier bag. Mm-hmm. Lighter than that, but do you see how that can kind of be like a neutral color? Like no, it almost that looks, looks girly, one hundred percent. No, that looks like tan almost. That's made for a woman. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's one hundred percent made for a woman. I mean, Let's that- just say that I can't handle boring. Okay. I can't. I think there's other colors that are not pink that are also not boring. So this house, we went with blues. Blues everywhere, and I was obsessed with blues, and Vic is okay with blue. Yeah, I am. But what is so wrong with, like, why don't guys like pink? Why is pink a feminine or a girl color? I mean, it's not... I don't understand, like, why you don't, like, want to look at it. It's beautiful. It's not that it's not beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's not that it doesn't fit in some instances. I've worn pink shirts yeah, sometimes, totally. you know, but I don't know that I want my kitchen walls to be pink, right? Okay, or well, that other living room, because you were thinking the other living room too to be pink, so, right? So, or like fixtures, like pink fixtures. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely pink fixtures. So just like some, it's not going to be like you're walking into like a Barbie doll house or anything like that, I promise. It's going to be... Like sophisticated, classy, a hint of pink. You know, at the end of the day, I'm gonna let you do whatever you want to do. I'm no, not I know, but I like to have I like to have this discussion because I don't want to. The thing is, too, with pink is that I'm afraid that, like, maybe I won't like pink in maybe a year. <laughs> <laughs> but I I am really into pink, and I've been into pink for maybe three years now. Mm-hmm. But just like hints of pink, it's it's. I can see how that could be scary because if you were like, I'm going to paint everything black, I'd be like, whoa, dude. Yeah, okay. But like, for example, like Mm -hmm. yellows, different shades of yellows, those are really nice. We are going to do one shade of yellow, but that's in the laundry room. Like the, the, I like, 
So you know who does pinks really well and those light yellows and blues, the Italians, right? Mm -hmm. And those buildings that they are like, they'll have, you know, Cinque Terre, for example. Mm -hmm. They'll have the whole side of the mountain with all these little houses and Mm -hmm. buildings and stuff. And they're all like these different shades of Mm -hmm. light, you know, really light pinks and light blues and light yellow. That, a combination of that. I like, but just having the whole thing in 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 the in the kitchen or whatever, just a light pink, with no other contrasting color that matches that. I am totally down for. I originally wanted to do like three pastel colors, mm-hmm. like what you're saying. Because that just that, that I would like better. I just didn't know if it was going to be too much, but um, like a yellow, a blue, and a pink. So we can discuss. That. That's what I mean. That that I think would be a little bit more fitting, mm-hmm. you know, because um, they have a lot of little towns like that that you look at the landscape. Yeah. I mean, what was that movie called? Uh, Which one? Luca. Oh, yeah. And that, that's what that is based off of, you know, that little town. It's, it's really, really neat. I mean. Yeah. You know, I, I'm kidding. I'll look more into that. I actually have um, Pinterest stuff. That That was my original idea just because moving into the house, if you look at our stuff a lot of it is like that light blue Mm -hmm. and i was just kind of like dang i don't want to have to rebuy everything yeah um so maybe we can that would help also with costs of things so maybe we'll see how it kind of fits in it's just right now it's very beautiful the house is very beautiful it's a very beautiful blank canvas where most people probably wouldn't touch it exactly that's what i was about to say you don't Necessarily, you wouldn't have to, but Nicole has so much personality and style that she definitely wants to bring that into the house. Yeah. So, you know, she's obviously going to do But I'm something. being very careful because it's not like the house that we have now where it was kind of like, uh, a, like, this is, this canvas is a lot more expensive to start. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're talking crown molding, right? So, so if you paint and mess up, that's. That's yeah. an expensive mistake, right? Yeah, like it's um, custom crown molding. Or if you change all the knobs like you want to do and handles in the kitchen, I mean, you're talking a ton of knobs and handles. And you know what? I looked those up yesterday and the ones that I want are like 24 bucks a piece. <sighs> yeah, so you're talking about a couple grand so just th- changing the and knobs so and so I don't think I'm going to do th- – I think I'm going to either try to find a different option. I just can't – like we're not, we're not going to do that. It's not – yeah, it's not that important until we have to right. – do that but that like it's i'm excited for you guys because we're talking about it now and you guys can't envision it yet because you you obviously haven't seen it i've waited so long for this moment (laughs) because i have saved my big brother money for five years you guys five years that's impressive it's in an account and no it didn't grow because i didn't (laughs) it's just been in a savings i didn't invest or anything like that but you brought it back because you've used some of it for other stuff but then you brought it back to yeah it's it's up it's up a little bit more than it was exactly so but um like i am about to use it and (laughs) it's so exciting i mean it's gonna suck seeing a huge chunk leave but at the same time i'm like this is what i've been waiting for for five years and it feels good. Like I'm investing in something that isn't just going to disappear, right? You know yeah. how you could blow the money on things that might not have been as important. This is a stable home for our family, mm-hmm. for Arrow. Long term. Long term. And we are like just so excited. I, I can't believe it's next week the we sign the We also the live, line. it's also, we live on a, a 10 acres and it's very, very steep hills. So like mowing the lawn is a whole nother you know, topic. No, but you know what I just thought about? Uh-oh. Winter's around the corner. You know what's going to be so much fun? Sledding down those Sledding hills. Sledding down yeah, the hill. Oh, I agree. And what's hilarious is there's no hills around here, mm-hmm. right? You, you can go through the entire thumb of Michigan and you'll be hard pressed to find a hill. And we have one in our front yard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like a steep one. Like that's going to be so much fun. And we fun. have a huge pond as well. And Victor's like, oh, like, do you think it's going to be frozen enough? I don't know. I'm not freaking going on it. I'll but. try it. I mean, tie a rope around my waist and, <laughs> oh, and I'll try to skate on it, you know. Uh, that, that that'd be that'd be so I mean, I'm excited. But yeah, we those ten acres, my my biggest concern. And Nicole has a hard time understanding. We had this conversation not too long ago. I came from a place where you have like the lawn that we have now, right? Or you live in the city and you don't have a lawn at all. 
right? You, you live in an apartment or whatever and you don't take care of it. So me thinking now that I have to figure out how to mow 10 acres or plow snow off of the driveway that's like... Our driveway is very long. It's like, very, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, I'd say it's over 300 yards long. It's really, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's almost like a road. Yeah. And so you plow that driveway. I mean, that, that's not, it's not something I'm accustomed to where people here, when you live on big land, that's normal, right? Like, oh yeah, we got to mow all this. Well, yeah. We Cause my dad that. has like tractor after tractor. Exactly. Zero, zero turn, turn lawnmower. lawnmower. He has a, he everything. has a four wheeler with the, with the, uh, with the plow in front. He has mm-hmm. the. You know, he has all that stuff. And so for me, yeah, for me, that's all new. Shoot, I'm I'm still getting used to shoveling snow (laughs) right out of this front driveway. Um, So, yeah, it'll be it'll be something new, uh, but I'm adaptable. Um, But it's just, yeah, it's something that I'm not accustomed to that I have to get accustomed to. Um, and, uh, and honestly, my parents are going to help or my, my mom oh, is going to, my mom is going to mow. I think I'm really scared for that because it's pretty steep, but the owner that's now, they're so sweet and she's going to like go over everything with us. We're actually going to meet with them earlier on the closing day, go over a bunch of stuff. And then, and they're so great. We've been in there so much mm-hmm. like throughout, mm-hmm. like, like even the painters already been yeah, in the house. Yeah, just yesterday. Yeah. Um, and then we hope to take them out to dinner because how this all came about was quite magical. <laughs> um, we literally just kind of messaged them. Um, my dad had heard that the house was going for sale, and so my dad messaged them. And it wasn't or even... Or my, my mom messaged them, I'm sorry. And then... The uh, funny thing is the house wasn't even going for sale. No. Not anytime soon. No. Uh, we were able to come to an agreement with them, and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and they, it just kind of worked out and And they've been working so hard to get out of the house so fast like this happened so fast they had a full house because they have another house as well but this house was fully furnished Mm -hmm. walk-in closet completely full everything i mean everything was completely like like you live like you live there right so they've got all that cleaned out and before the closing date and And we did this all off realty yeah which has been great yeah it really has it's just trust like it's been awesome and and there is nobody like there's nothing wrong with like anything on real estate Vic and i kept looking at house after house after house oh my god this and it got kind of hard to where you're like okay (laughs) is the realtor on my side or yeah are they on the seller's side it's like they're playing mind games with us sometimes and and i don't do well with those if you're playing a mind game on me i'm gonna immediately withdraw from the situation because i feel like um just in my big brother background i can tell when someone's trying to manipulate me and i'm like okay i think i'm getting screwed here. yeah see ya yeah no that that definitely happened a few times and i'm like man i, I don't i don't know that this is the, the way that i want to go buy a house like mm-hmm. i just talked to the i had a seller i had a question for the seller so i messaged the seller and then she gave me an answer and then i go talk to the the realtor about it and the realtor's like yeah i don't know about this and i was like well i just talked to the seller and they told me oh they did Oh, oh. oh, okay. Then uh, maybe we could do that. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I don't, I hate the middleman thing. I don't like it at all. It's really hard to, when the agent is for the seller and then the buyer, because obviously the more that we spend for it, they make more money. And yeah. <laughs> it was just getting really like frustrating and hard. And so I'm really happy that this worked out. This worked out. And we, I don't know. Did we talk about how we withdrew from a previous house? Yeah, no, we didn't talk about. I, I don't. I don't know that we did, but we basically bef- like it was crazy timing. Yeah, uh, before we found the house that we're going to move into, we were we already put in an offer mm-hmm. with another house. We signed uh, the agreement, uh, the purchase agreement, and everything. We weren't in love with the house, but it was the next step that we needed to take. Yeah, because we've already outgrown this house like uh-huh. a year or two years ago. Uh, and it was time, especially with Arrow now, we didn't have enough space. So we're like, okay, we're, we'll pull the trigger on this house. And as we're going through the process of this house that we like but we're not in love with, this mm-hmm. other house comes about, right? The house that we're now going to move into. And so we had to, you know, forego the money that we did for the inspection, the money that we did for the purchase agreement, you know, the deposit and all that. We had to do the that. whole new like loan and everything. So. We had to start the whole loan process again. It was it was really a hassle, but a blessing. Uh, oh, and yeah. you know, at, at the end of it all, it was it was a blessing. But man, this market, this housing market has been crazy. 
Um, and so I feel like we got lucky with this house and oh, we're so uh, grateful. I'm really, really excited and to be, to be completely honest, to be completely frank with you. <laughs> um, when we did the walkthrough of this house, Victor and I were automatically like, no way, no way we can afford this. <laughs> like we walked through it and we're like, wow. Yeah, this is really nice. But like, I'm, my, I wasn't emotionally getting attached. I went home and I was like, that was cool to see, but there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, you're talking like. The, the amenities that this house had, right, and the space and all this stuff were just something like... something that we never dreamed of being able to yeah, have. Yeah, we're like, that's definitely not us. I mean, this is maybe us in like 10 years. <laughs> yeah, like, this is really cool. Like, oh my God, I didn't realize like how... In- like, I didn't expect to have a bar this early in yeah, my life. <laughs> right, there's a really awesome bar in the basement. Like, <laughs> like heat, a man cave, in, it's like, so awesome. And like heated floors and stuff. I was like, oh no, that's not something like I could ever even think about. Even building our home, I don't even think we would like say, oh yeah, let's spend money on heated floors Mm -hmm. and so we went home and we're like oh okay well that was cool yeah and then that'd be um, nice yeah but we were like eh, we'll just go through with the other one like that's more on our budget and then uh we got the price on for this house and we're like i'm like vic we can make it work like it's 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 up there but i'm like yeah i'm like (laughs) yeah it's up there but it's like okay let's just let's do it like let's just (laughs) let's go forward because you know, spending these opportunities don't come up no, all the time. And yeah. spending this on the other house, and it's only like ding ding more than this house. Like, let's just freaking do it. And so here we are, and we're so excited, and it felt right, and everything had to line up. And you know what's really crazy is with our other house, I was like, man, they're taking forever. Like, let's get stuff moving. And, and which was also a blessing. Oh my God. Such a (laughs) blessing. Cause had we like signed the paperwork, we wouldn't have been able to get out of that house. Yeah. And I was like, thank God they were like being slow. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you're frustrated and you're like, everything's so slow. And And that goes back to everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And I mean, I even had the cupboard person coming in. Yeah. Going to rip out and do a new kitchen. And, and like, we were super we, we serious. We picked out countertops and new sinks for yeah, that house. Yeah, we drove house. all the way down like yeah. in the city to do that. So, I mean, we were really serious. So had they stepped on it a little bit, um, we would have been locked, locked into that in. house. So thank goodness people sometimes take their time to like <laughs> stall and procrastinate. God, God has a plan. And I'm sorry for the word vomit. You can obviously tell that we're excited. Oh, yeah, I know. But uh, that's that's where we're at in our life. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so it's it's... It's really cool. I mean, I, there's nothing else. Another thing that's crazy. I mean, it's not crazy, but my three months are about to be up. Yeah. Monday, my my three months paternity leave goes back to work. I go back to work on Monday. It's it's bittersweet, right? Mm-hmm. Because I I enjoy the time that I have at home, and I do enjoy my job. But it's been great to be able to stay home and mm-hmm. get paid. I mean, it's. There's nothing that compares to that. It, it's it's crazy. Um, but I do love my job. And the guys were nice enough to bring my car back to the house. Mm-hmm. And so I'll be ready to go on Monday. But it's just weird. It'll still be nice, though, because I'll be around. If something happens, I'll actually be in the area, you know, yeah. so I can be home for emergencies or anything like that. Um, I would say for the first, like, month or two, you'll probably come back here to eat lunch. So instead of the new house, mm-hmm. I think... If you can eat lunch still here, I don't know if that's something that you can still do. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if you want to go out to lunch with your partner or whatever. <laughs> but um, because, like, I think we'll move. What we're planning is just to move, like, one room at a time slowly. So we probably won't be moved in until around Christmas, like, fully is yeah. my guess. Yeah, I think the the what we were talking about is there's no reason to just throw everything in the new house and then mm-hmm. have to organize it after the fact. We can take stuff there and organize it as we're taking like it there. One room at a time. Because... You know, we have the time. We're not in a yeah. rush to get rid of this house. No. Um, Probably in spring. Yeah. Nicole will have a studio. Yeah, totally. <laughs> studio with Wi-Fi because I'm not sure if yeah. we're going to get Wi-Fi at the new house for a while. So, oh, yeah. That's So another, at least we yeah. I will have this. And um, this has great natural lighting. I love the natural <laughs> light in this home. It's going to be hard to let this home go. It's our first home. A lot of memories here oh, yeah. transform the thing completely. And, but it's been, it's been awesome and it's done its job for us. It really has. I, yeah, I can't believe we're going to be out of here. It will be bittersweet. Yeah, it will. Once Uh, it's like empty and stuff, we're going to be like really sad. Cause right now we're so like 
overwhelmed with everything in here. <laughs> yeah, once it gets empty again, we'll be like, wow, this is how it was, the like, bare bones. This is, and it's going to be sad, but yeah. it's going to be a great home for somebody ne- next that needs it. And um, when we do sell, I'm going to make sure... It's like giving my baby to some someone, so you got to be the right fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like just take care of her because she's she's been great. Give her some TLC. Mm-hmm. And I think what we're gonna do too is sorry, we're just like word vomiting. It's just sharing everything. Mm-hmm. Is I think we're gonna have a big sale, and I'm gonna set oh, up the yeah. sale. The sale will be in our in this home we're in now. Um, Almost it's, like an estate sale. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> tile, so we'll be able to clean the floors and stuff after everyone walks through. But um, selling everything pretty much on the walls and all, a lot of gadgets because none of this – this is in our style. House, yeah. This is like the rustic farmhouse style, and we're not going to go for the rustic farmhouse style in the new home. Um, so it's like all this stuff that I spent so much time and money on, it's going to be sad and hard, but – what do you, well, you can't hold on to everything. You no, literally, you can't. you can't. So, you know what I was looking at? We'll finally have a space for all that alcohol. <laughs> yeah, we do have a cool bar. Victor's well, gonna be very excited to show you guys. That. Oh my gosh! I'm, I'm not like. T- I mean, it's cool, but for me, it's kind of like. Well, because it, uh, it ha- it's literally so. <sighs> And I can like give a quick explanation of it, but it's like a bar that's made of like stone, mm-hmm. right? With a with a hardwood uh, uh, top to it, and it is beautiful. It, it's, it's so very beautiful. beautiful. The, all the wood cabinets, and then it has like how they have it at a bar and like yeah. a restaurant has the light up uh, table thing, so you can put the alcohol drinks on it, and it lights them up in different colors. Yeah, and you um, can stack them like top shelf, middle shelf, and it has shelf. like a, a fridge for like over a hundred beers. Uh, yeah, like so many six packs or something. Yeah, like uh, hundred six packs or hundred twelve packs. I don't know beer. In, Basically, in the fridge we're gonna start having the, uh, we're annual be the, Halloween party. We'll, and we'll probably be the place that has to get together most of the time. Christmas will be there with our family because mm-hmm. we have Arrow, and then. Football Arrow's games first. every Sunday. No. Football in the basement with no. the boys. Thursday no. and Sunday night is for the boys. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Then guess what? <laughs> Have them enter through the bottom door and don't come through the top. Thanks. Exactly. Yes. You know what? I, and he's going to put his like barber chair down there and cut hair. Yeah. But I was thinking like, um, I wonder, you can't make people like walk down that hill, can you? Yeah, you can. Why not? Okay. Well, I mean, they could always walk through the house if the house is like... No, I'd rather, especially if people that I'm just cutting hair for, I'd rather them just come through the... I mean, it's a walkout basement. That's what it's for. So you can walk out the bottom back of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's its intended purpose. Dang, honey. We're really like... We're... We're... We're there, I feel like. Yeah, we are. We've been working... We've been grinding. ...towards this. And uh, we're getting to that point. It's crazy. And I think that's really important for anyone who might be listening and especially anyone coming off maybe a show and <laughs> got some money. Um, Save it. <laughs> don't be so eager to get rid of it and go back home and just grind it out because mm-hmm. I think this is where happiness lies is not where, you know, it, it's what you've accomplished and what you've waited for and what you, you know... It's not for me, okay, because I, I just feel like I can say this because I've done it three times. Yeah. And I could have easily, like, moved to L.A. There's nothing wrong with moving to L.A. Mm-hmm. Moved to L.A., paid a bunch of rent because I was like, okay, this is what everyone on Instagram's doing. Or everyone's like, this is what makes everyone happy, right? Yeah. And then just try to keep up. And I would have been back home with my parents been like shoot you know which there's nothing wrong with that but then i might not have had i would not have had the money to make this move when to have the to seize the opportunity seize the opportunity because to seize an opportunity you have to have made good decisions several times in the past and trust me i try to move to nashville i tried to make these big moves and my parents were just like no, <laughs> like you're not going to pay $500,000 for like a 800 square foot home. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like fighting with them. I'm like, yes, I need to do this. And then here I am. And it's like, thank God I'm right down the road from my parents and we have a babysitter. We have me and Victor has a great job. Like this is just, I just can't believe that it's actually happening. I guess yeah. a year ago, if you would have told me this, I'd be like, 
I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's it's a lot of uh, trust the process and enjoy the journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we definitely, we have so many memories, you know. I mean, we knew we always wanted to move. Mm-hmm. and But this is just another part of the journey that we've been enjoying this whole time. Because every once in a while, Nicole and I look back and like, damn, we've done a lot of stuff. You know? Yeah, and I don't have any, I don't have, we, we've gone on so many trips and stuff. Yeah. But I don't have any... Regurts. Like, reg- no. Regurts. Regurts. <laughs> yeah, I no, wasn't regrets. like, oh man, I should have like did this or everything I turned down and everything I took, I think was exactly right. Mm-hmm. You know? So anyways, that's just a little bit of, um, I know always coming off of a show or maybe going on a show and stuff, it, it's overwhelming and you want to do, you want to try to keep up, but like, trust me, that's not. That's not something I ever did, and I feel like... Um, or life in general. If you yeah. inherit some money, you yeah. get a new job that makes more money, and yeah. doesn't mean you have to increase how much money you're spending, you know, um, Our all cost that stuff. of living here is like... Low. And it helped. It helped Because yeah. if I tried to move anywhere where a cost of living was higher, I wouldn't have had any... I would have wanted to go out for brunch. There's no brunch here. Mm-hmm. Go out for brunch, <laughs> and like every week, and do this and that, and just keep up, and it's like... There's no bottomless mimosas here. <laughs> no, there's not. Oh, the country life. But this is where our heart is. So, all right. all right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you for tuning in, guys. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. The easiest way is on Apple Podcasts, either on your phone or online. <laughs> and you can tell your friends you can listen to this podcast anywhere they listen to podcasts or music most of the time. Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, you can always go to www.cococalientepodcast.com and you can listen there and check out our merchandise. Uh, please don't forget to follow us at Coco Caliente Pod on Twitter and at Coco Caliente Podcast on Instagram. Thanks, guys. Thank you. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.